what a time we had. <laughs> hey guys, Frankie Slauson here, and welcome to what is the final uh, Frankie Slauson Show video. Well, for now, anyway, uh, or at least for the fourth season of, uh, of the, or the last past season, anyway, uh, until summertime starts, or until probably next week when it gets to be uh, nice out, or uh, summertime. When May 31st comes to an end, and it's June already. Because uh, a lot of things are going to be coming up this summer that, uh, you know, this, this year is kind of marked, in, in my view, as a decade year. It's where certain things have turned, you know, either other deck, you know, other numbers, or especially the number 10. You hear a lot about the number 10 this year, basically because, like, for example, this this 2012 is the 10th anniversary uh, of WWE, uh, when WWF uh, decided to be WWE. World Wrestling Federation went to become World Wrestling Entertainment because of the lawsuit that they lost to the World Wildlife Foundation. Uh, ten years since uh, TNA Total Nonstop Action has been around, uh, and for me personally, it's, it's, this marks ten years since I graduated from high school. When June second comes, it'll be ten years until since I graduated from high school, or ten years since I finally went on my own, not knowing what my what the road was going to lead me to, uh, as far as what journey I was going to take at the young age of eighteen years old, almost turning nineteen at the time. And now being 28, you know, another four months or so, I'll be turned 29. Oh, it's gone by too damn fast. And I still haven't accomplished everything that I want to accomplish yet. But hopefully in the next 10 years that'll that'll happen. Maybe a lot sooner than 10 years. Uh, it's also 10 years uh, this summer since I went to college. Uh, it'll be 10 years in August. And also 10 years that, uh, since I actually made my first radio broadcast. Uh, that'll be in August as well, the end of August. So, a lot of things, plus uh, my sister's going to be having a baby, and my brother's baby and my, will be turned two on June 18th, and my, and my uh, dad will be 61 years old as well on the 18th of June. So, there's a lot of things that are going to be going on this summer. But I wanted to take this, this time, if I haven't said it enough already, I wanted to say thank you. To all the people who uh, who have watched the Road Back to Story Oregon documentary, because that was uh, I, I want I do want to put it on DVD, but for right now I'll just let it stay on YouTube for the time being because I think if people enough people see it online, then maybe they'll want to, they'll want to have their own copy, and it's easy to do if you have like a you know if you want to make it easier on yourself, you could always just download the. Uh, the MP4, they give, I think they give you that option, I believe. You can download other people's videos if you like. Or if you have a YouTube downloader or whatever, where you can download videos and watch them on a separate site other than just uh, YouTube itself. Because sometimes the server can be kind of slow. So I just download the videos and watch them online. And then delete them afterwards. You can download it and it'll turn into an MP4. And if you have a CD burner or a DVD burner, you can put it on a disc. And it should work for you. I don't see why it wouldn't, but uh, that's if you want to do that. Some people probably won't, but but I, I you know, uh, a lot of people uh, were kind of amazed on how funny I was, and see, this is the thing. I wanted to make this documentary because I've always wanted to make a documentary. That, that was the first thing. I wanted to make it so good that uh, I was willing to pretty much do anything, just about anything, just to get a laugh, or just to get somebody to watch. I mean, that's how... I mean, I don't want to make it sound like I'm desperate for viewers, but, you know, a lot of videos, and even the documentary, you know, because of, of where I'm at on YouTube and all that stuff, it's like, you know, I'm still under 2,000 subscribers, not even under, not even past 2,000 subscribers, and I've been on here for four years, you know. I don't get why I don't have more subscribers than I should, you know, I, I, I try, you know, but I don't try to milk for subscribers. I don't try to, like, say, please, please, please subscribe, you know, get my hands and knees and, and uh, you know, literally beg for subscribers because if you keep begging for people to watch, as I'm probably doing right now, I guess, in, a, in another form, uh, they probably won't want to watch. But, see, the thing with the documentary, what makes that so special compared to any other video that I've done on YouTube here, is because it, it hi 
it highlights it highlights everything that I never got to do and never got to see the last time that I was there. I never got to film anything the last time I was there. This time I got to film everything that I could possibly film in the time in the short time that Mike and I had to to be there. Uh, if we could have had a couple more days, that we probably would have fulfilled everything that we could have filmed that made it to like a six-parter or something like that. But I realize that now that it was about over four hours long, I mean, that, that's a long video itself, but being able to put it in one-hour parts or four one-hour parts or approximately one-hour parts uh, was kind of fun to do. Makes it mixes it up a little bit. But I hope more people will see it because that... That to me is like the probably the biggest video that I will make on here <clears throat> on here for a long, long time to come. I don't know what the future brings for me as far as other videos, but I guarantee they won't be nearly as good or nearly as funny as uh, the the documentary. I can try, and, and obviously, you know, some of the humor that I was uh, saying and stuff, uh, or the comedy that was uh, I was providing was mostly uh, based off of Dirty Jobs, uh, Mike Rowe. I find that guy very hilarious. That's why I'm a big fan of Dirty Jobs, because he's not just the type of guy who, who just goes to a place and just does the job or whatever. He adds humor, and the way, if you listen to him, how he talks, and also the fact that he looks a lot like Jim Barney. Uh, he, could, he could, if they ever brought back Ernest on film, they could have him play Ernest, and he could do just as good as Jim Barney could. I guarantee, even though he's probably a little bit more built than Jim Barney was, and maybe a little taller, but in the face and everything, he could easily knock it off. He could easily do that. I know that for a fact, because it just the, by watching the episodes and stuff, and that's why I'm a big fan. He, you know, he's he's very funny. So I try to be like that. That was my, that was kind of my inspiration. And then, of course, you know, going back to uh, the original Around the Country movie. Uh, that's kind of the format that I had it at, like, uh, with uh, what Sean Phillips and uh, MJ Kelly did uh, when they went. And it was also good because I didn't have to have the focus on me all the time. Uh, sometimes filming by yourself is fun sometimes, but when you go on a vacation and when you go to these cool locations, it's fun to have somebody else come with because then you, know, you see the things that I see through the camera here, but they also, you see that through what Mike, what Mike saw, that have Mike be kind of the guy who you know introduces where we are or you know where we're at and what we're doing. And that turned out very well. He he really did a good job, and uh, you know I, I was just happy that everything worked out. A lot of people were were saying that you know what's up with your friend there, Mr. Sniffles, and I know in some of the a couple of videos he was you know when I had him hold the camera. I, you know the thing is you know. You know, you know, I think he probably just has, like, an allergy or whatever, but I didn't mind it. I mean, I was just happy that I was able to do what I came out to do. And after four years of uh, of uh, waiting to come back because I had some unfinished business, this was the unfinished business, to be able to record everything that I couldn't record before, to go up Astoria or call him, uh, because it was such a nice view, uh, to see the Goonie House again. Sadly, we never get a chance to get a tour, but it was still fun anyway. To see some of the changes that were that have happened since the last time I was there. Uh, you know, but they really, you know, the city of Astoria, Oregon, really cares about their heritage. And when it comes to, like, the the Goonies, or anything Goonie related, I mean, they, that's that's their baby. That's that's what, that's their bread and butter over there. Uh, if you don't believe me, you have to go take a trip over there, because if you wear a Goonie shirt, it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, a lot of your shirt says the Goonies, or, or you have some type of image of the Goonies on there. I don't care if you make the shirt yourself. Uh, <laughs> uh, you wear something Goonie related over at Astoria, Oregon, you're going to fit in right away. And that's why I, I, I continue to say that that's, not, that's my type of town with my type of people. Because, you know, coming live around here, and this is a place I've lived for much of my entire life, on and off here and there. Uh, it's way different over here. You wear a Goonie shirt, and they don't really recognize it. Some people might recognize it, but not a whole lot. You go to Astoria, Oregon, you wear a Goonie shirt or a shirt, short circuit shirt or anything that was filmed around here, but especially the Goonies. You wear that, and people recognize you right away. And that's what helped us a lot with the documentary, because we were able to have access to a few things 
just because of the shirts, you know, it, they weren't normally going to give us a free tour of some of the places that we uh, that we went to. Uh, there was a couple of places that we got to get a, uh, we got to go back uh, behind the scenes more or less. Uh, it didn't cost any money because of the fact that people liked the fact that we were wearing Goonie shirts. So, and uh, it just worked out so well. Uh, let's see, what else can I say now that I have the camera on? Uh, the uh, the DVD update. I got some questions about that. Uh, I, I didn't nearly get as much views on that like I uh, like I like to, just because I figure you know, what what I did was what out made history. Okay, it wasn't just uh, to compete with anybody or whatever. It was just because I knew that nobody ever has ever done a DVD update from the Goody House. I am the first guy and the only guy so far. Uh, to do that. Now, I realize that maybe that's kind of far in between, but I wanted to make it as special as I could. Some people got mad because I didn't, it wasn't like Goonie related. Like, I didn't show the documentary, the, the Ron Pad documentary, or I didn't show, I didn't bring my copy of the Goonies over here. That wasn't the point. The point was, uh, because if I, you know, if I did a, a Goonies, all Goonie related uh, update or whatever, that's what people would expect. I'm the type of guy that does that does things that people don't expect. And, like, with the documentary and all that stuff, and with doing the, the DVD update from the Goody house, or from the Goody parking lot, or whatever, the neighborhood, anyway, uh, people weren't expecting, they weren't know what I was going to whip out. And it was the only reason why I whipped out the, the shot of the Around the Country movies, and the Out and About the movie, as well as part of why I brought them out there, was to kind of, because this whole documentary thing was a lot like that. You know, a lot like the first and second one. Uh, you know, this would be like the third one. If I ever did put it on DVD, I'd like to have it done the same way like they did. But we'll see what happens. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I was not disappointed at all by anything that, that was done. I think it was everything was just as good as it could be. Everything was shot with my little Toshiba camera here. Uh, the only reason why the whole documentary, documentary was shot in standard... 4x3 is because widescreen takes up a lot more space, and I had no idea originally how, because I've had problems with this memory card or whatever before, where I would record stuff in high definition, like when we, when my brother, when we had that campfire a few, a couple months ago, uh, and that campfire conversations too, I actually recorded a lot more stuff in HD, but it didn't want to record it, and it didn't want to, for some reason it wouldn't record it, so... I only got a couple parts out of there, and I was pissed off because I had a lot of we had a lot of fun time, a lot of fun moments in you know, that little while I was there for the campfire. That uh, now will never, you know, now it's just a distant memory. But anyway, I'm just happy just the fact that everything turned out as good as it could, and uh, with it being the standard, I was able to record longer, a lot more, uh, and it's just what I wanted to do. Now I've seen a few other people that have gone to Astoria, Oregon. Uh, before I did, like a couple weeks before I did, and posted some videos that they did from the recent trip, and some of them were a lot, way better than what I ever thought I could ever do. Some of these people actually know how to edit really well. I would love to do that, I guess I could if somebody taught me how uh, to do all that fancy Adobe Edition stuff, and where you can do cut and paste, and I don't know, it's, it's, with the world of editing you can do so much, I just wish I knew how to do that. Because then my, I know my videos would be probably a little bit better and maybe get more views and stuff. I mean, I know how it works with it. You know, I've been here for four years now, uh, you know, or almost four years anyway. And, yeah, it's it's a it's a whirlwind of adventure. But I, but I hope you guys enjoy it. And if you do want to, you know, if you do want a copy of the DVD, I can always, you know, figure out something, I guess. Uh, and I just have the time where I can put it, on, you know, on a disc, and like, uh, you know, send it to, to send it to you. But I'd have to charge a little bit, maybe five dollars for shipping. That's all I would charge, uh, and then we could probably do it through my PayPal or whatever. What I would do is just uh, send, like, download the files. I'm gonna do the same with my brother, because uh, he wants to see it too. Download the four parts on an MP4, put it on a disc. And then, you know, set, put it like a little CD case or whatever, and then send it to whoever wants a copy. But the only thing is that if I do that, uh, well, I'm going to make sure that it works first to test it out, obviously. Because I don't want to send out stuff that's not going to work. 
I'll test it out, making sure that it'll work for my brother's PS3, because I think this weekend we're going to watch it once I re-download the stuff. And uh, make sure it works, because if you have a PS3, then I'll be able to say, it does work on your PS3. And you can always copy and burn and all that. Uh, but I have to charge $5 shipping and handling only because, or for shipping anyway, because of the fact that I can't just send them out for free. $5 is all that I would be asking. Uh, but if you if you guys have an interest, just send me a, a private message. Uh, if you want a copy, you know, it won't be where it will work on your DVD player. But if you have a DVD player with DivX, or if you have like, uh, I mean, it'll work on all your computers. And what it'll do is it'll just be like a C, it'll be like a disc, and it'll, it'll like, uh, it'll work on your Windows Media Player or your uh, any type of media or your VLC Media Player. It'll work on there. It just won't work on your DVD player. But uh, unless you have like DivX or a special type of burner that you can do that on there. Anyway, so we might have to do it like that if I, because I, I can't only really afford so much, and I can't really afford to spend more than what I'm going to make, you know make 20 copies and I'm spending $200 it's on, you know, and, and then give them for like $5. That's you know, not making any money. And, and it wasn't really the point of making money to do this. It's just that I have to charge something if I, if people want a copy. So if you want a copy, I'm willing to, to I'm going to let, you know, I'll let you know first. Uh, I'm going to test it out this weekend here to make sure that everything will work uh, once I download the files. And if it does work, then I'll let you guys know via Facebook or on YouTube. I won't make a video about it, but I will let you know if they work or not. If they do, uh, well, what you can do is you can send me your address, and I'll make, I'll make you a copy. And I'll send it to you. But it'll be $5 in, your, in my PayPal. I can always put that down <coughs> if you want a copy. Anyway, so I think that's all I need to say. Uh, other than that, thanks for just taking along. I wanted to do something special as a way to end this, end this season, and I... And I think I accomplished that. There will be a lot bigger videos. We're, we're possibly planning on going to Rapid City here maybe this summer for a vacation. Uh, for a family vacation. And if not, then I will be planning possibly a, a, another trip somewhere. It won't be Astoria, but it will be probably somewhere like Astoria. Or somewhere similar anyway. Somewhere closer anyway. But anyway, I'm your host Frank Slauson. Keep, uh, keep doing what you guys do. Uh, goodies never say die. Remember that. <laughs> Alright, we'll see you later, and, uh, hope you enjoyed the documentary, and tell your friends about it. Alright, bye.